Okay, we're now recording. Okay, so it is 6.32 and we're going to call the meeting to order. If for some reason I drop out at some point, it's because my internet and I will try to rejoin as quickly as I can. I, yeah, you're cutting I out. Say, or it's yeah. really today. Sorry, um, Angie, you're so really cutting out. The first thing, Kelly, did you want to do a roll call or was it easy enough for you to see everyone who's here already? I'll try calling in. Okay, well. Can you do a roll call or could we do one? I can, who? Usually, I can usually see on the, um, well, actually I can look through the participant list as we're talking. It's not hard. Oh, never mind. We can figure it out. Okay. We can go on. Can anyone else hear Angie? No, she's muted. Nope. Um, oh, now she's not. I had someone suggest to me once that. Um, Hallie, can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Katie, the, what was well, your um, That if you're on 5G and um, sometimes that is problematic for Zoom. So mm -hmm. if you have a choice between a 5G or a 2G Wi-Fi, go with the 2G and it might help. I think that, I don't really understand it well enough, but um, hmm. I think unless everybody's on the one type, I don't know if that is gonna make a difference or not. Yeah, I think it's more, more a bandwidth issue. So the higher speed you have, the better you're gonna sound and look. Angie might work better if she turns off her video and just uses the audio. Mm. Or gets a faster internet connection. Would it help if we all shut our videos off? It shouldn't. It's usually more of an issue for whoever's having the choppy sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's coming from them, then it's And I, I know in my experience connecting directly, you know, through an ethernet cable to, to my uh, Wi-Fi router, I quadruple the speed, so. Okay. Yeah, I have, um, I have mine connected to my router with, through a cable. Is Angie, Angie, are you still there? Oh, you're, con she's connecting to audio, it looks like. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, I can hear what Kermit was saying and I tried calling in on my phone, mm -hmm. but that didn't work. So oh, I'm no. turning off the video. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sorry. Everyone, I don't know okay. what's going on. I'm wondering if the call in number somehow oh. isn't right because maybe Spencer would be on as well if the call in. Let's see how Angie sounds now with the, her video off. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, maybe he is having problems because the call in wouldn't work for me at all. So, okay. Um, why don't we go ahead and get started? You th okay. you could get the um, roll call from the online yep. record. Yep. Okay. And do we, do we have anyone from um, the public joining us tonight, or is it just committee members? I don't see anyone on from the public. 
Okay. Yep. All right. So the first item on the agenda um, is approval of the minutes. So has everyone had a chance to go over them and does anyone have any comments? Uh, for today? Uh, for last month's oh, meeting okay. minutes. Never mind. Do we? So if no one has any comments, would anyone like to make a motion to um, approve them? I'll make a motion to approve them. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess I should ask if anyone's against him or would like to, to refrain from voting. <laughs> Hey guys, can you hear me? Okay. Hey Spencer. Yeah. Is that hey. Spencer? Yeah, I was listening to you guys and I couldn't uh, get it on the phone, so I joined with the, the video call. But uh, I'm driving and I just have the sound on, so I will be chiming in on every every few seconds. So sorry to be late. Oh, sorry, Spencer. It's my fault. The call in number, some I don't know if I didn't write do the right call in number. It's my fault. That's okay. We're re I'm in now. Sounds good. So Spencer, we just approved the minutes and we're about to move on to the next agenda item, which is public comments, but I don't know that we have anyone here. Actually, um, just a point of order or question. Did we actually vote to approve the minutes? We just had a, a motion and a second, that Correct. I recall. We had a motion and a second and no one um, um, abstained or objected? Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, okay. If that, okay, if that counts. No, no, but I can do it. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 All, all against? <laughs> and no one and no one abstaining. Okay. Okay. All right. Then public comments. If we don't have anyone from the public, we can move on to staff updates. Who, who's 9912? Unless, they just joined. Probably Spencer. No, I don't know. I'm on video. Do we have someone else on the on the meeting who just joined? Let me unmute you. Hello? Is there someone else now on the meeting? A six zero eight number? Hello? <laughs> they left. Okay. It's, it, if they are on the call and yeah, sign in through the video because the phone is not working, you can hear but you can't speak. So if you if you want to be part of the meeting, to join in and uh, join the video. Oh. Hey, hmm. well they dropped off again. So okay. Okay. Staff updates. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I can give the staff updates now. Um, so, Barry, the one, did you want to go ahead with? Yeah, I'll go ahead with the staff update. Um, the things I was going to mention is about the solar group buy. Um, right after our meeting, I did find out that Madison program through Renew. Um, they're doing it this year, but they're not charging any. They're not charging cities. To participate and so they are going to offer um they're going to offer info sessions for communities and people who want to just join in to learn more about it um so it's something that we could just go ahead and advertise on our website and facebook um and any other means we can think of um and people will have access to that and the city won't have to pay any money to, you know, people can just do that on their own, but we can help advertise for the Madison program this year. And then I had another solar contractor um, just contact me sort of out of the blue, Everlight Solar. And they, they're interested in organizing a group by in Middleton um, for our community and working with the city on that. Um, so I don't know like what the, 
the legal ramifications or you know what the I don't know the process for doing that with a with a um with a contract that just reaches out to you um you know what if there be a conflict of interest if the city work directly with that contractor or not I need to talk to Abby and Mike about that um but right now like I don't have the the time unfortunately to figure all that out and launch a program um but I, you know, I might go ahead and just meet with them to see what they're thinking or what options there might be for future group by solars. I really just need to understand the process better, but I wanted to make you guys aware that that company did reach out to, to us. Hmm. And, um, and then I'm not exactly sure on the timeline where Legacy Solar, who are, they're, they're the, the group that put together the solar group buy in Western Dane County. And um, Sherry Gruder talked a bit about that last meeting. And I just haven't, follow, haven't had time to follow up to figure out um, mm -hmm. you know, the details of that beyond just piggybacking on what they have on their own Facebook um, sites and you know helping to promote that perhaps through our Facebook but I haven't done that um, basically I'm just swamped and don't have like it's like there's missing information for all the solar group buys and don't have time to completely track it all down for this year but um, I would like to try to at least advertise the options that are already completely formulated mm -hmm. and put that out there um, another thing to update is that there's not going to be a good neighbor fest this year that was just canceled officially recently. <clears throat> and Kathy Olson, who's an alder, um, made a suggestion somewhere, I don't know in what capacity or forum, but that perhaps some of the funding that would have gone to the mayor's brunch um, that the city puts forth for that could be used instead for um, like a Black Lives Matter event in Middleton or um, used as an organizing tool along those lines and just and Abby just thought maybe I'd mention it to this committee to um, just to put it on your radar that that might be a potential source of a little bit of funding and I don't know I asked how much money that is and I didn't get an answer yet but um, it might um, it might come into play in our discussion later in the agenda when we talk about uh, the talk about Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and a, a potential statement we make or what we want to do to react to this. Um, in other news, the solar project where we were going to put solar on three municipal buildings um, this summer and the bid documents should be in draft form and, and ready to be reviewed this, this Thursday in a couple days. We initially thought we would just put the solar on two buildings, but now after we have all the financials in, it looks like we might be able to squeeze in solar on all three, which would be the Municipal Operations Building, the Lakeview Park Shelter, and also EMS. Um, EMS is the, the one that might get um, more expensive, so we might bid that as an alternate to see if a contractor could come through and we could afford all three at once. It'd be nice to do all three at once if we could squeeze it in with our budget. And then something for maybe next month's agenda to put um, in the back of your mind is that I'd really like to do something where we promote our energy goals and our sustainability goals at Lakeview Park Shelter in conjunction with the solar there's an opportunity that we could run a display system from the solar system and be able to show people real time how much energy is being produced by the solar on that structure. But then in conjunction with that, also use it as an opportunity to maybe make some kind of um, display that talks about our broader sustainability goals and energy goals, something that could potentially be updated but something that's beautiful and lasting and is um, an amenity and adds to the shelter interior. So um, that would be something that would require budget for sure. And we'd have to probably use some of our sustainability um, operating budget for that, but also hopefully we could use some of our, um, the, of the solar money, at least for the display part of that display. So, um, that's something I might try to formulate a little bit more and then come to the back to the sustainability committee. But I also wanted to give you a heads up if you have ideas about that. It would be something we'd have to work closely with Matt Amundsen in public lands and rec 
um, Rebecca through recreation to make sure that the actual materials we'd use and where we'd want to put it would, you know, would work out with what they're um, hoping to do as far as programming inside the structure. And they'd probably want to talk about materials and they would have good ideas about it. So um, that's, I think, all my ma my major staff updates for now. I'll cut it off there. Angie, are you still on? Or Spencer? <laughs> um, I am still on. I was just waiting for Angie to if she's there to to take us the next one. Um, Kelly, that sounds. I think that sounds great. It get, got me thinking about the meter, like. Talk about a cool public uh, display in the corner of downtown with a, uh, a meter running backwards or forwards, depending on how much solar is being used. And you could, if you could put together some visual or computer that constantly worked, that would be a super cool thing to put downtown somewhere, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be cool yeah. too. I like the idea of putting something at Lakeview because it really captures, I think, a broader swath of the community. Like if there's such a diverse user yep. group in Lakeview and it's everyone's fun place to go in the summer. Um, and downtown too, I think we should have something somewhere. Cool, great. Um, I can't read any agenda or see any agenda guys. So yeah. uh, if, 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 Angie, are you on there again? Um, yeah, I don't see her. Looks like she dropped off. Okay, uh, Kelly, can you uh, sure. run the agenda? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah sure. Um, the next one is the election of chair and vice chair. And welcome also to our new sustainability member, Lisa Hanairo. Did I get it right, Lisa? You got it right, oh, thank okay. you. Um, so, Hi, Lisa. Um, hello. Welcome. My pleasure to be here. <laughs> I this look is, forward okay. to eventually being able to meet in person. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know this was a bit of a rough one. This was, we had more tech problems this time than we have in the past even. So sorry about that, Lisa, as you're- Oh no, that's okay. I've been, I've been Zooming and Teams meeting and go to webinaring with <laughs> everybody <laughs> every day, so. Lisa, do you want to give us a quick background of yourself? Sure, I can do that. Um, well, I've been a Middleton resident since 2017. Um, my family uh, used to live in Sheboygan, uh, right on the lake, and I have been uh, working for the Council of State Governments for almost 29 years. Um, it's an association of state governments, a national office in Lexington, Kentucky, and regional offices, uh, one of which was in, or still is in Lombard, Illinois, the Chicago suburbs. That's where I originally started. And in 98, I moved up to Sheboygan. And uh, so I've been working from home for 22 years. And uh, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's still different for me because now my husband is working from home too. And my 14 year old had to finish his eighth grade year at Cromery from home. Um, but uh, the work that I do at the Council of State Governments, uh, I, I have essentially two projects, both related to environmental uh, policy. One is uh, nuclear waste transportation and now storage and disposal. Um, so I worked with the Midwestern state governments to uh, partner with the US Department of Energy to plan and prepare for um, shipments of radioactive waste of all, all types. Um, that project I've had since the beginning. That's what um, I started doing at CSG many years ago. And then since 2011, I've also directed the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Legislative Caucus, which is an organization of about 200 state and provincial legislators that um, focus on policies and programs uh, to better the Great Lakes, to restore and protect them. Um, and they're very interested in water quality and access and affordability. Um, so I've been working with legislators and um, other Great Lakes organizations on things like lead in drinking water, nutrient management, um, aquatic invasive species, and, uh, and now we're finally starting to move into the area of climate resiliency somewhat late, um, but it's, you know, it's a very, it's a nonpartisan group but we recognize that within the Great Lakes region, there are a lot of 
um, uh, single party control um, state houses. And uh, so it's, it's been a tough uh, challenge to get climate change on the agenda as something that everybody embraces, even though I'm sure everybody on, on this call embraces um, the science. It's, yeah, there are some obstacles in the legislative arena, especially at the state government level. So, um, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, I live uh, on Whittlesey Road, right down the street from uh, Pheasant Branch Conservancy, and uh, and I'm looking forward to doing whatever I can to help this committee um, complete its assignment, uh, working on the sustainable city plan and, and other activities. Great, thank you. That's great. Yeah, great background. We'll uh, definitely tap into your knowledge. It'll be awesome. Yeah, that's that's a lot. That's cool. Great. So the so the sustainability chair and, and vice chair happens every time about this every year about this time. Um, I would love it if somebody else will step up and take the chair position. I feel like I've taken it to a point that we could use some fresh blood in here. Um, is there anybody out there who might be interested in being nominated for the for the chair and, and running with it? Crickets, are you guys come saying on, I'm talking on. to myself? <laughs> <laughs> um, is Deb Weitzel on the call? Deb, are you? Would you be interested? She is on the call. She is. She's muted. She's being Let very me quiet. unmute you. You're un. Oh. There you are. Now I can hear you. Okay, there I am. No. Um. I, I don't. I don't feel like I'm qualified yet to um, take over the whole thing. Okay. Fair enough. I. I um, anybody else out there have any interest in uh, taking point? I think I see Andy. Spencer, if you could see, <laughs> if you could see the video of all of us, you would be <laughs> laughing. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 well, I am sure I, I, I can't see well, anybody. <laughs> well, as the new kid on the block, I certainly don't want to presume that I would, you know, make an excellent chair, um, especially if Deb is saying that she does not know if she feels qualified to do it. Um, but I will say, you know, I, I have, I have run a lot of meetings with a lot of people. This is what I do. Um, I think uh, my areas of expertise fit in well with a lot of the, um, uh, for instance, the specific chapters of the sustainable city plan. Um, but it also seems like for the chair or um, vice chair position, one of the things you need to be able to do is organize a meeting and herd cats. <laughs> so, <It's good> <laughs> and <laughs> And I've done that a lot. So if, you know, I, I guess if no one else is interested, I will put my name out there recognizing that this is literally my first meeting and I completely would understand <laughs> if y'all don't have the confidence in me yet to do this. But, um, but if, uh, if no one else who's got more experience on the committee is willing, I, I would consider it. It's very nice. Thank you for stepping up. Um, I, I like that idea. Anybody else have any uh, thoughts or concerns? Or is there a vice chair position out there also? Somebody's got to want to step up. I could be the vice chair, I guess. Um, I'm always late to the meetings, too. That's the other thing, because I'm on the Friends of Pheasant Branch. Sure. They're from 5 to 7, and yours starts at 6.30. So, and I'm always transitioning over. So <laughs> that's another reason I didn't want to step up. Um, right. But but I could do the vice chair, um, you know, and just be late. <laughs> I yeah. um, and both of those sound good to me, Kermit. Were you going to say something? Well, I was just going to. Um, I, I was going to say that I, I see the chair is needing to carry the ball a little bit more fully. I mean, Spencer, you spend time you know, meeting with Kelly and kind of yeah. coordinating, kind of visionizing a little bit. So I. <laughs> And I just feel like I have too many irons in the fire for that. But the vice chair, I also was open to considering because I think that's kind of like 
uh, that's the pinch hitter that fills in when, you know, the big bat isn't able to make it. At least that's the way I've seen the role play out. Maybe there's more to it that I don't appreciate, but, uh, and, uh, so anyways, I, I, I'd be, I'd be open to that as well. But, uh, so we got a competition. I like, I like competition. This is good. You want to <laughs> Deb, Deb, should we arm wrestle or how do you want to settle? No, we don't. <laughs> my, I, my guess is we can have a vote. And, and, and yeah. Basically, I'm just saying I'm willing. I don't want to rock the boat one way or the other. Ugh. Can't. <laughs> so I, um, uh, Kelly, I can't see or make like. A, okay. I don't even know who's on this call. Okay. Um, I'd call anybody else out if uh, if I knew who was on the call. <laughs> so, <laughs> did a couple of competitions at all of them, um, and Angie uh, conveniently dropped out too, didn't she? She's not on the call. She's here, but we can't hear her. But I think she can hear us. She sent okay. me an email. Yeah. So is she a thumbs up? She would like to be. A, uh, is she in the race at all? It's getting competitive out there. I feel so bad because she's, um, let me, she, she, should, be able to she chat. should be able to chat. Yeah. Yeah. If she wanted to send you a private chat or a chat to all. The chat should even be, um, it could be, was public. I mean, you would see the chat. Everyone would. She could also do, um, I think reactions maybe, um, Thumbs where up, you, down. What, yeah, like where you wave <laughs> or um, <Just> scream. <laughs> um, I don't, so I, I don't care. I mean, I don't know if we necessarily, I guess, uh, so we got only one person who's stepping up for the chair, I think, uh, is Kelly. I don't know how, I can't remember. When I was uh, handed the position years ago, I was, uh, I'm not sure if there was any competition or vote. I'm not sure. Is, is that something we need to have a vote to, for this, for the chair, probably? Yeah, I think someone would make a motion, and then you would vote. We would vote on it. Okay. Somebody would want to have a make a motion for me? Sure. This is Katie. I will move that our fabulous new <laughs> member, Lisa. <laughs> no, um. I'm going to say it wrong. Will you Hanairo. Say Hanairo. Hana I will yeah. move that Lisa Hanairo be voted as our new chair. Nice. Do we have a second? I'll second. This is Chris. Chris. Okay. Perfect. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Good. All right, Lisa, you got it. So, Lisa, I will. Thank you. Um, the next week, maybe I would love to sit down with a do a do a video call or meet you for coffee or something, and we can kind of. I'm not going to just stick you with this and uh, make you run with it without it. I'll I'll help. Uh, I'm going to clearly be involved also, so I'll, I'll help you with the transition. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Spencer. Good. And yes, Kelly and I had talked about um, uh, meeting later this week sometime with the new chair. <laughs> awesome. And now, so now set a meeting up with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I guess I'll meet with Kelly to get uh, brought up to speed on, uh, you know, just the, the mechanics of the committee and, and some of the questions I had after reading through the materials. Um, but then next week, it would be great to get together with you and I can that sounds perfect. get some insights from you. Well, thank good. you all for your vote of confidence. <laughs> this is good. Okay. Okay. So vice so, chair now, I think we need to still do. Deb and Kermit, are you, are you guys both uh, want to be thrown in the ring still, or is uh, is there a? Uh, oh. I, I don't care either way. I'll just say that I just say part of the reason I stepped up is that you know Deb was saying there is a an attendance issue, uh, and I generally am pretty much here on time every time, and that in terms of filling in as the chair substitute. That would yeah. seem to make it easier. That, but other than that, I think Deb is a great candidate, and I have no reason to step. I was just more offering it as a as a way to perhaps avoid that problem that she was describing. Okay, then we'll nominate Kermit for the vice chair. <laughs> okay, we have a second. I'll second. This is Lisa. 
Lisa. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All, all Aye. opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Thurman. Lisa. Does that mean Lisa starts running the meeting or does it start next halfway at the next one? Probably the <laughs> I'm next one. <laughs> I, move, I move that it start with the next one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, perfect. We made it through there. Seconded and approved. Kelly, what's our next agenda? Okay, the next one is um, committee assignment to the Pheasant Branch Creek Corridor um, short term special committee and I'll explain this what I know and I don't have all the details but Matt Amundsen who is the public lands um, director and Mark Wagner the city forester they are in the process now of taking the Pheasant Branch Creek Corridor master plan which was approved by council they are now going to bid the work for that and select consultants who will do this work and carry out the master plan um, and so um and for lisa's benefit um in the past we've had this the the sustainability committee was asked to provide feedback on the pheasant branch creek corridor master plan which is a plan that was created to um help redevelop the creek corridor in middleton after the devastating floods of 2018 so that's been approved and written already but now they're they're looking for consultants who will actually do the work and because the sustainability committee played a role in um, providing feedback for that master plan they would also like one person from our committee to represent our committee um, on a short-term special committee which will then um, help select a the consultants to, to carry out the master plan and it would involve i believe one or two meetings and i think you would um, probably be able to provide feedback on um, how to make the selection, uh, and I'm not sure if you'd review the um, review the proposals from the consultants. Like I should know more about that, and I can I can provide very specific, better information about that. But we do need to select somebody from this committee to serve on that, um, and you know, ideally, it'd be someone who was maybe at that meeting. Um, where we went over, where you, you heard the presentation from the consultants who wrote the master plan and, you know, someone who, who, under, who has read through the master plan somewhat, just so that you're familiar with it. Um, I guess it wouldn't have to be, it's not absolute, but um, I'm hoping there's someone will step up and, and want to do that. I think the meeting will take place in early July and be in the evening. Um, and I can't, tell you right now exactly what day. I don't know if it was July 7th or 8th. Katie, do you by any chance remember? Um, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I can maybe look at some notes while we're here. Yeah. Kelly, I, I'd, be, I'd be happy to uh, step up and, and do it if nobody else wants to, but um, okay. I've, okay. I've been through the, been involved in the process. So I'd be happy to do it if, uh, if it works with timing wise. Okay, that'd be great. Um, I'll get you that, all that information, Spencer. Um, I, I asked Abby earlier to, tonight, actually, like before the meet, right before the meeting, if she knew and she couldn't remember either what, what day that meeting was on. We um, kind of heard about this at our last staff meeting and um, I haven't heard any more details about it, but that'd be great, Spencer, if you could do that. It, it's not an ongoing committee. No, I'd be happy to. Um, okay. Oh, okay. The Pleasant Branch just voted on the same thing, and aren't there two committees? One for what? stabilization and one for the trails design and bridges. I thought, and I thought I read that somewhere in in our notes that there were actually two positions for a sustainability committee member to be on. Oh. And, and according to the friends, the the timing is like two weeks, and boom decisions are being made so it's, it's going to be pretty quick yeah i i remember here i remember thinking coming away with there would be two meetings but i i can't remember or it wasn't communicated um clearly that it was two separate um committee appointments i heard in the staff meeting what i remember is that it would be one person serving as the the key person from the sustainability committee to represent about this but I mean, it'd be great if there were two people from sustainability. One could take one meeting and one someone else could take the other. 
or the same person could maybe do both. I'm, um, you know, either way I think would be acceptable. Okay, because we have two different people. So that's you have the friends of Pheasant Branch um, designated two separate people. Uh, yeah, Hans um, Hilbert is going to do the trails design, and Michael Niebauer is going to do stream bank stabilization. So, and they, they're both um, had expertise in the different areas. So, okay. I wish Dick Lathrop was on the call tonight because he might be interested in one of them. I nominate Dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I was about to nominate Deb because she's already in, heavily involved in the pheasant branch. Oh, I know, but I'm not an, I'm the education chair. I'm not the expert on stream bank stabilization. Uh, <laughs> and I, think, I don't know if any, I don't know if any of us are per se, but so I think we, be, I, if I'm if I'm interpreting Kelly's, uh, it's more of picking the contractor to do it. Right? Uh, it's not necessarily that I'm. Any of us are designing it. We're just taking the contractor to do the work, right? Reviewing yeah. proposals. Yeah, that's my understanding. Right. Um, okay. Well, least, yeah, we we took it to mean that there there had to be some expertise in the area. So that's so we yeah. have kind of quote unquote experts. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, yeah, I as a member of the Friends, um, I certainly could. Um, I mean, if you needed two people, I could be on the other. Okay. I mean, I think really it's nice to also, even if you don't have, you know, water, a water background, um, you know, just bringing it, bringing your, the sustainability lens into the discussion would be helpful too, in which case it doesn't have to be super technical, um, yeah. which you would definitely have that lens. So that'd be great, Deb, if you could do the other meeting or you and Spencer decide which meeting works best for you of the two. And then um, if one if one of you can't do that or the timing doesn't work, I can also reach out to Dick. I don't think this is something that the committee needs to vote on. It's just so if someone stepped up and volunteered, then they would be the designated member. Unless we had a unless people were just clamoring to get on the committee, then we'd probably need a vote. But um, otherwise, does that sound okay for um, Spencer and Deb for you to? Yeah, will you just will you send uh, send us a, an email this week with when um, the meetings are, and then Deb, you and I can talk. And I don't care if I I mean if I do it at all. If you want to do both of them, or if, if I do both, I don't care. Let's let's just have a the three of us. We can figure out and make sure we're we're represented. Does that sound good, Deb? Yeah, I, yeah. If you had a preference, um, that would be good to know. If if not, we'll just wait for Kelly's. Yeah. Yeah, just send us an email with the details of, of the timing of them. This is Lisa. I think that sounds like a good plan. And I would also suggest, um, Kelly, if it's possible for you to confirm whether they wanted one person or, you know, because it's possible that the friends chose two people just because the, the project itself is, is big. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you had um, experts in uh two different areas and so they're going to partner and review the proposals but I, but i do think even without that engineering uh background uh, certainly being able to bring in sustainability and just ask questions of the you know see how well the contractors or prospective contractor contractors can answer your questions and address any concerns you might have you know that's that's an important part of it perfect all right, you want to move us on the next agenda item, Kelly? Yeah, the next one is a um, statement for George Floyd and the interconnection or intersection of climate justice with racial, racial justice. And um, before the discussion starts, some of the background that I can provide on this idea is that I wanted to put this on the agenda to provide a space. Um, if it's not on the agenda, we can't really discuss it. So I put it on here. Um, because I feel like there, this is a huge moment um, of potential um, entry point for some meaningful action that's been that <laughs> has been hundreds of years in the making. And um, I spoke with Stacy Reese, who's the sustainability coordinator in Madison, and we talked about they had a conversation about this. I wanted to hear what Madison is doing, and she sent me um, a draft statement that was drafted by their sustainability committee, they have, they have a subgroup within their sustainability committee 
called the REST-G um, subgroup, and it's um, the racial and social equity subgroup of the, the larger sustainability committee. And so the, co the chair and the co-chair of that drafted a statement and they're going to be going over the draft statement at their next meeting, which is on the 23rd. I would be happy to share that statement with the committee. Um, I didn't feel like I should post it publicly because Stacy shared it with me, but um, I don't know yet if it was a public document. Um, I know it, it'll be a public document very soon if it's not already, um, because it'll, be, it'll go up on their agenda for Madison but I just didn't feel comfortable sharing it yet, but I, I can share that with all of you. I wondered if, um, I feel it's really important um, to, especially for the city, to, make, to take a clear stand that sustainability and you know, climate justice, and environmental justice, and racial justice are really interconnected. And um, you can, I, I, am, I believe you can't have one without the other. And I think sometimes that gets lost in some of the actions that um, the environmental movement takes. And I think it's because there's a lot there's a lot more language and discussion around this now. Um, and I think people are understanding how these things intersect. But I thought it would be a really powerful thing for the sustainability committee to um, produce a statement or a set of actions you would like the city to take or address um, that has a little bit more teeth than just saying, we believe that this was, you know, bad and wrong and we hope to, you know, work on racism in the future. I want it to be, have more teeth and be better worded. So um, this would be something that would come from the sustainability committee. Obviously not for me, I'm staff. I think I'm going to um, present at or make a statement and during the public comment period as a citizen tomorrow night at the city council meeting. I think there'll be a lot of people who will be making public comments probably on this issue and about police brutality and um, probably having asking a lot of questions of our own police department. Um, so the public comment might be pretty robust, but and I know that drafting a statement is not a quick thing. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. If you wanted to discuss this or if people have interest in doing this, um, I'd be very willing to help or you know, help set up any meetings or discussions about it, but um, it's up to you as the committee. I just wanted to put it on the agenda to hold space for it. I can't see anybody's faces or reactions, but I think it sounds like a, a great idea. Um, does anybody have any thoughts that they've been thinking about that they want to get into it? Um, yeah, I don't think I would be like in any part writing it, but I would love to be part of the discussion. Um, I, I, I don't know if, um, well, I, I founded the Dane County Youth Environmental Committee a couple months ago, and this, this month our meeting was uh, pretty much totally concerned about the, um, the connections between what the work that we're doing in our environmental committee um, throughout Dane County and environment, uh, environmental injustice and racial just injustice. So it was just a really interesting talk for me and everybody else that was at the meeting. So I think that I would love to be part of that conversation, whatever that would look like. That's amazing, Daphne. I would love to have your voice as a part of this. Mm -hmm. I have, you, I'm sorry, go ahead, Andy. Okay, I think uh, to uh, this topic, I have uh, some uh, ideas that uh, could uh, put into the statement. I think there is a common uh, thread between um, the environmental issues, uh, uh, policing, uh, community well-being, and uh, climate change, and uh, people. I think that's respect. Mm -hmm. if we all think about uh, um, the relationship between uh, people and uh, the nature, and also thinking about uh, the pandemic, the virus issue. And I, f I feel that uh, you know, um, you know, uh, people on this uh, planet um do not have enough respect to our nature i think uh, that's a uh, pretty important and also um for this uh, kind of like uh unfortunate uh, racism you know um 
I, I think it's also like a respect uh, to people. So no matter uh, like a gender, uh, races, or uh, different generations, I think uh, you know people need to uh, show and uh, develop uh, a certain kind of respect. So I, I think uh, you can uh, see that where, especially like uh, the mask, like a facial mask, for example. Some school in the community is going to uh, open. I heard about like UW system is going to uh, uh, resume, you know, the entire operation of the campus. But, uh, you know, they don't inf enforce like a uh, facial mask, but just uh, say that we uh, want to uh, encourage people we want to uh, develop the culture. But, uh, you know, some people we know, they don't respect people, and they don't put on their mask. It's not uh, just about their individual freedom. It's also about respect to other people, to protect other people, to protect our community. So I think uh, the respect is really important. Maybe we can emphasize more in a statement about uh, uh, respect between people and, uh, you know, to the nature. So I think that's uh, important. If we respect the nature, I think uh, we can avoid a lot of pandemics in the history. So that's my thought. Yeah. Thank you, Andy. This is Lisa. I really like um, what you said, Andy. I think you're spot on. And and you know when I think about respecting nature, I mean that's what sustainability. You know we're all trying to. to change the way we interact with nature in our communities um, and and make sure that you know we have a plan for keeping the environment uh, livable not just livable but you know thriving um, how do we do that when we don't even respect each other um, as humans and you're you know the the whole issue with the um, um, the systemic racism that's huge but even the example you used with the masks or or the people who feel like it's okay if we call the herd and let the elderly and you know the people who are more susceptible to covid um let them perish because the rest of us will be fine you know and uh they point to other pandemics where people didn't shut things down i mean that's the type of uh, disrespect for human life that True. i think is is uh, really a problem today, and I, I, I like the idea of, you know, tying these two together. How do how do we how do we pursue our mission of a sustainable city um, when right now we're lacking even, or, or we haven't gotten to the point where we all have mutual respect for one another. We can't can't build respect for nature if we don't have it for each other. Very true. Very true. I think, uh, you know, like uh, uh, some uh, settings uh, we can uh, not just uh, um, talking about uh, this is the culture, we should uh, do this, we should do that. Or we try to encourage people. I think uh, there are some tools that uh, in some places, like a school, they could uh, have a um, policy there. Or like a business, they should have a policy there. You know, if you don't put on your mask, you cannot uh, go in and, sh and uh, shop your stuff. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's a, a, a protection, you know, um, to other people. And the uh, school, the same. We should not uh, just uh, say that we encourage, uh, you know, students, especially they are very young and uh, they could not uh, think about the, uh, the outcomes after their recovery, right? But uh, in our community, in our society, there are so many people. They are just, um, they could be, uh, you know, like uh, dangerous because of the uh, the virus. And so many aspects, you know. Um, I think that this is uh, just uh, make me think about uh, how important it is to respect people, to respect the community, and uh, also, like what you say, this is, uh, you know, the very basic, uh, you know, logic for the sustainability idea. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Kelly, Kelly, I really appreciate your having the initiative and sensitivity to flag this issue into the agenda um, because it's overall an issue that has been kind of, I guess you call it a side burner issue of mine as I've been engaging the climate justice and climate change issue, which has been my primary focus outside of 
and even inside sustainability committee work here. Uh, the other groups, and two of the other groups in particular that I'm very active with, Citizens Climate Lobby and 350 Madison, have over the past couple of years even, and with real, a real quantum leap in the past couple of months, been attempting to wrestle with how do we bridge the gap? How do we interweave and recognize the interdependencies and interconnections of justice in multiple arenas, including and especially the racial justice arena? Uh, I mean, in some climate advocacy conversations, you know, we sometimes refer to people of color are hit first and worst by the consequences of environmental degradation in general and climate change in particular. Um, and so I have tended to keep the pri prior or priority focus, let's say, on climate and the climate crisis and trying to advocate for change there. And what I've come to appreciate and what has come into focus is we've been forced to confront just in bold, visual, tragic terms how the institutions of our society are not are not caring equally for all people. Let's, and people are being killed just essentially for being black. And so I find myself reflecting, okay, if we are working in sustainability, are we sustaining a world that is worth sustaining and is a world that is sustainable for everybody? And so that's one arena or aspect where I think there's a real connection to the whole topic and theme of sustainability. So is the status quo is not sustainable for everybody? And it's much less sustainable for people of color. And so I think there's a burden that comes out of that. And so, yeah, basically, I, I just really think it is worth addressing and being uh, thoughtful and deliberate to to put forward some some acknowledgement of the issue, some vision for engaging the issue, and you know, I, I have already gone so far as kind of independently, I had a guest column in the recent Middleton Times Tribune where I touched on and tried to explore the issue more focused on the whole topic of the racial justice without trying to draw the interconnections, but that was definitely at the back of my mind as I was wrestling with it. So I agree we should do something. I wanna see something done. Uh, who's going to bell the cat? Uh, I, I don't feel like I could take the point or lead for writing something up, but I would think I could make time to be part of a conversation, try to hash something out, if that's helpful. This is Angie. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I really like what Andy said as well. And um, you know, I think it sounds like you have a few people who want to help develop the language for the statement. But I think maybe one of the things that we can do uh, right now is that while we're working on the sustainable city plan and going over those sections, that we can make a real effort on some level to develop an action that um, in some way makes a difference here. And you know, I think in, in some of the topics, it'll be easier than others. Transportation, I think, would be one area, and land use maybe another area where, you know, we could develop some actions that could make a difference. I think things like solid waste might be a little bit harder, but um, I, I definitely think that, you know, if we're serious about this, then then the place we need to do it as well as, you know, maybe the outreach and the education part about um, respecting each other in the environment. Um, it would be getting it into our plan and, and trying to live it on a daily basis. 
That was going to be um, my follow up to that. So um, I work for Slipstream, which most of you know. Um, and as a nonprofit, we did our board created a statement around this, not specifically sustainability, but we were talking about how we wanted to um, make sure that everything we do is for all because that's part of our mission. And so I just want to make sure we're careful when we do craft the message that we make sure it's about what we're trying to do. And if we haven't haven't been doing it, that we're upfront about that, that we're learning from um, things and that we are making a change and this is how we're going to do that. Um, because I don't want us to jump onto a bandwagon, which I've seen other companies do and they've been called out for it, where they make a statement um, in support, but they there's nothing behind it. Um, so they either don't acknowledge that they need to be better and these are the things they're going to do to be better or that they have already done something so that you can actually see. So well, lifting up the cover and actually seeing what you've been doing. So um, I think this committee has done a good job of really thinking through those things. I know that discussion has come up numerous times um, and I agree with Katie, um, you know, the, the public education piece, her and I and Daphne are working on that and you know, that's a, an especially a big piece for that. So um, that would be the only thing I'd say about just being careful how we craft it. What, with the respect that Andy talked about, I think that is a great message to be able to put out there. Yeah, this is Katie. I totally agree that um, the respect, and I, I have, I've been embarrassed because I've just sort of, I'm just mute on this topic. I'm so heartbroken. <laughs> so I, I think it's really great, Kelly, that you put this on the agenda because I, I, we do need to live it. And, you know, we are not a very diverse city, but I think that we are a welcoming city. And Andy, your word respect says it all. And, and Lisa, you're, sentiments exactly so um i don't have much to add other than thank you great does anyone else have it, anything they want to add i don't want to start talking <laughs> i agree the idea that uh, we uh, probably uh, could uh, think about what kind of action we can do and we can uh, put uh, the value into our uh, revised uh, a sustainability plan and uh, I, I think that would be um, that would be a doc documented and also uh, show our value to and demonstrate uh, our effort to uh, you know uh, make the society more equal and then um, uh, educate our uh, people and the next generation you know how to uh, how to deal with uh, the, uh, the nature how to deal with uh, the relationship between uh, people. I think that's uh, pretty important. Once we have that in our value and in our mind, I think a lot of questions or problems uh, in the society could be resolved uh, pretty easily. And we can avoid a lot of uh, uh, huge costs, in my view. Uh, I think uh, that's uh, better than uh, you know, developing like a vaccination cures and uh, so many things yeah so we can we can uh, do something in uh, uh revise the sustainability plan mm -hmm. this is lisa again yeah I, i'm i think there are, there's a lot of opportunity in the sustainability plan um to to work in actions that really will make a difference and, and i'm not saying you know we have to put these in whatever the statement is that the group comes up with um, but just thinking in, in my own work with water, um, you know, one of the things that uh, legislators throughout the region and, and municipalities started doing right away um, when the, the COVID crisis hit was um, eliminate water shutoffs uh, because you can't wash your hands, um, you know, thoroughly the way you're supposed to frequently if you don't have water. Um, and so things like that, or, you know, my son just finished uh, eighth grade, as I mentioned, and it broke my heart to think about the people who had maybe two, three or four kids sharing a borrowed device. 
and having mm -hmm. to sit in a parking lot at the library or at one of the schools to have access to Wi-Fi. You know, that just doesn't, that's just not right in such a, a wealthy society as our own. Um, so I'm not sure if there are ways to, I, I think about things like how Cromery, you know, no kid gets left behind on a field trip because if they, if there's a fee, you know, they'll always be able to find a way to pay for that child to go. Um, and I just feel strongly that there should be a way to make sure that no family is left behind because this crisis is going to continue. <clears throat> um, and, and nobody should, uh, no one's education should suffer just because you know, that child is from a family that can't afford, you know, the monthly internet bill. This is Angie. I wonder, um, I, I, I don't quite know how to do this, but I wonder if it might be worthwhile having a separate category that addresses equity. It, you know, that compared to having it integrated into each one of the, the seven sections that already exist. Hmm. I feel like sometimes it, you know, it's, it would be easy to lose it in those sections if you're more focused on the title of the section, like transportation or, um, but maybe it is worth calling out a separate section entirely that deals with equity in our community and then points at the other sections. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great idea, Angie. Yeah, I love that. Um, could could I don't we know manage a both and approach with that idea? Because equity, permeates and infiltrates all the other things. I mean, if, so I think there's a way where we can do try that focus, but I think if we just put it in a separate chapter, it doesn't show up clearly in the others. And I think there, if there would be a value to finding the things that make a difference in transportation and in, in uh, greenhouse gas reduction, whichever chapter you want to talk about. I think there are ways, we, and, that's my bottom line. I'd like to see both done. I, I think adding it to highlight it, but permeating it through so it's not just a tack on, but it's interwoven and just all there. I agree. So what this do my, we do? I'm sorry, Deb. So what do we need to do? Do we need to form a committee for this separate section or do we have all these different uh, duos, you know, to, to change or whatever to re-edit um, what was done a couple years ago and and put in um, statements of climate justice with racial justice. How do you how do we go about it? That's the next question because what everybody is saying are really good ideas. Now, how do we incorporate those? Would it be helpful to get together very soon and write a, a statement um, because we're we're in a really I think. I think we're at a touch point moment in, in history, and I think it's important that we speak soon and loud in some ways. I don't mean flippantly or before we're, we, we have thought about it, but maybe if we got together soon, the people who would like to and discuss this, maybe from that conversation, we will have a bit more clarity through that conversation on how we want to integrate this into our plan or, um, you know, I, I don't know, the, the conversation might might go a different way. I mean, when you read the um, the statement from the Sustainable Madison um, Committee, it's really, it's really direct and it, it really addresses um, police brutality and George Floyd and it does not min min mince words. Like it's, it's really strong, I think. So after reading that, you might, you know, have a different idea of what direction you want to take with the statement versus the longer term work that our committee does. I don't know. So maybe, I don't know, convening a group to talk about this um, in more depth than tonight would be a starting point. I, I just uh, checked the uh, sustainability plan and the page 31 community uh, that the action table already uh, include the justice and the um, equality. So I, I think, uh, you know, we already have something there and we can uh, just uh, exp like build on that and then expand. And maybe the topic we can uh, change a little bit called uh, community and the equality, something like that. 
So we just uh, emphasize it's a uh, important like a uh, topic or theme in our city. So that's uh, something we can we can uh, revise uh, for the next uh, uh, draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I don't know if this is pertinent or not, but I'm just sitting here thinking about um, whether we could include different ways that different cultures honor nature, if there's a, a way we can include um, these little tidbits throughout our, our handbook. Maybe it's just in our education section that Chris and Daphne and I are doing, but um, that's just a thought. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, in my view, I think that that's a good, great idea. I could not remember if we have a library committee or something. I think we do, right? Yeah, there's a library board, and um, I don't think I don't think it's a committee. Um, okay, and I I I remember like the Middleton uh, Library always uh, invite uh, uh, some uh, speakers from a different uh, specialty area. I think uh, Katie's idea is uh, pretty good. Maybe we can um, uh, encourage the board or uh, the library to uh, incorporate um, this kind of uh, topics uh, into their talk. I think they will be a great education uh, to the community members and also uh, help us uh, to learn, right? Like uh, you say, in, in different cultures, how they you know like uh, deal with uh, the nature, how they have a good develop a good relationship with the uh, uh, um, the environment so i think that that would be pretty interesting in my view yeah the one that i'm thinking i can't think of the word of the word right now but there's a japanese word for a forest bath so when you walk through the pheasant branch trail you're actually receiving phyto nutrients from the trees and they have actually done scientific studies in Japan that it it's a way to boost your immune system and what a really great way to tie culture in with nature the uh, friends of pheasant branch on July 16th are doing a conservancy days on forest bathing so oh. we're handling that topic and fabulous so mm -hmm. Would you like me to um, send out a doodle poll or, or find a time that we could all meet to discuss um, drafting a statement from the Sustainability Committee and decide, probably have to decide what, you know, who your audience is, you know, I was thinking it'd be powerful to have a statement to council too. I mean, I think a lot of systemic racism has its origins in, in government and redlining and a lot of the environmental justices were directly caused by um, by you know past policies that governments have enacted. It doesn't mean that that Middleton is is consciously enacting um, <laughs> you know harmful policies right now necessarily, but um, we're sort of a product of what our history mm -hmm. has been um, and you know, wealth distribution, public health, all of that, we're, we're suffering now for the policy that was made in the past that we're perpetuating just because we haven't been able to break these systems. And, um, you know, like, we'll have decisions, huge decisions to make come budget time, which is coming up very soon in August, we'll be deciding how much money we wanna put towards policing, put towards the environment, you know what what are what are our asks as a sustainability committee going to be capital budget will we ask for you know solar or will we talk more about energy efficiency for vulnerable communities or for black communities specifically um, i mean you know how we do have leverage and control in the city somewhat we have power with a small p and we and the city council and committees in general don't truly represent our community. Um, so I think just knowing all that, being cognizant of that, having those conversations are uncomfortable, but um, we, we do, we are in a position where we could make 
actual change and not just provide sentiments for how we feel about it, but we are in a decision-making body in some ways. So just so you know your own power and how we can leverage that for good. And I, I would like to hold each other accountable to continuing the conversation and actually doing something that results in a change that results in, you know, um, improving the situation. I, I don't want to lose this momentum and I have been um, thinking hard about it for the last couple of weeks and I literally just don't know what to do. So maybe, maybe this is the way we can make it some kind of a difference for somebody. Okay, well, I feel like the direction is then to um, convene again to talk about this in more depth, and I can help coordinate that with members who we would like to. It's not required, so no pressure, but it would be nice for people who are in, want to engage on this topic. We'll reconvene for that. And anyone who'd like to make any kind of statement um, on your own as a citizen, um, I think people will be speaking tomorrow night at the city council meeting. So that's, if anyone, does anyone have any more thoughts on that? Or we can move on to the next agenda item, I suppose. A practical question as far as convening another meeting. Do, are there quorum issues? Oh, to yeah. Pay attention to, and how do we? Right, there are quorum. Thank you, Kermit, <laughs> for the glaring, obvious <laughs> logistical rules of engagement um there are quorum rules so um yeah we couldn't meet with uh, more than four members at a time i mean it could be something where a few members take a stab at drafting something we pass it off to the entire group they reply don't reply all but send me comments like we could do something like that and then try to be at a, a stage where we could discuss something more tangible at the next meeting if that Sounds like a way forward, I'm not sure. Spencer, are you still on the phone? Do you have any thoughts on that or Angie? I, I think Spencer's gone. Okay. I, I think that's a good approach. To, if you had a smaller group that drafted something and then Kelly, if you were able to send it out to the larger committee and then we could com comment directly to you but not to the group, then those comments could be pulled together. Okay. That sounds good. Um, so I know Daphne, you mentioned you would like to weigh in and I think that's really important. Um, and are there three other people who would like to, to get together to discuss this? Kermit, you expressed interest. Well, pretty much everyone did. <laughs> Chris yeah, every, and, and Gavin. <laughs> everyone did. Who has Which time? Is great. <laughs> and Andy. Um, That's mainly struggle right now is I don't have the time. Okay. Rick's just really busy right now, so. Yeah. Um, are Google Docs like illegal, illegal if we all were to work on a doc or is that like not okay? I think I did ask about that one time, Daphne, and I sort of got the impression that it w we couldn't do that because we'd all be interacting on something that wasn't, even though I guess it could be public for everyone in the whole world. Um, it just, it was a, yeah, a, gov a body working outside of the public meetings. It wouldn't fly, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> So Kelly, if you don't have four already, I would like to participate. Okay, and it, it could also be something where people um, take chunks of it and you know, there could be two groups. Mm -hmm. If someone was Good. interested in like, like if Andy was interested in drafting some language around um, respect um, and creating a you know, sustainable community and um, where we respect both each other and the environment and how how can you respect the environment if you're not also respecting one another and you know there could be there could be two groups working on slightly different language i suppose so are we uh, going to uh do like uh, two things one is the statement and the other one is the sustainability plan 
Yeah, I mean, the way I was thinking of it is the sustainability plan would be a, a different, slightly different conversation, but might, okay. um, might, it might be one of the action results from the conversation we have initially. We might be able to have more clarity on how we want to approach equity in the sustainability plan after talking about equity um, as smaller groups. I'm kind of flailing here. So if someone has a, you know, a clearer way of approaching this, if it's up to you, really. Have, I'm not trying to force you into a certain process. <laughs> if we have a sub quorum size subcommittee, could they work on a Google document together so that that might simplify the logistics? Like you wouldn't necessarily have to have the yeah. extra meeting overhead, but you might be able to have the discussion facilitated that way. Yeah, I mean, the Madison committee, they had their chair and co-chair draft a statement and then they are bringing it back to the larger committee to discuss and it'll probably be heavily edited, I'm, I'm imagining. Um, so if, if a smaller group wanted to do a Google Doc amongst yourselves, that'd be okay. And then bring something back to the larger committee next month. It doesn't mean you couldn't pass around drafts to everyone in between. It's just, you, we can't reply all in one email thread and basically meet through email as a big group. Would it be possible if like, we all wrote like a little passage or a paragraph like clearly explaining like what our thoughts are and then maybe somebody could incorporate that all into like one long i don't know if that that would work at all and then we could go from there i don't know that's a good idea daphne how would that <laughs> look um, may, uh, may i please uh, know when the medicine statement will be out and uh, can I, we uh, get the uh, draft and then we can uh, move from there would it be sure. easier and i think uh, we can uh, edit uh, just uh, um, one by one for example i will take the first shot or you know kermit uh, can take the second and uh, so on so we just uh, send that uh, uh, to the group and then we will say the next will be a uh, kermit to take a look would they work i not sure i'll have to i need to ask mike about that i mean i could definitely i can send you the madison statement so you have that and you could make your edits the way you wanted them and send them back to me i suppose um yeah i just i'm just a little hazy on the robert's rules stuff or um, how you would send around documents it seems kind of ridiculous because this does just seem like something that you just want to get together and have conversations about as a group. <laughs> um, I can check back with Mike. Why don't I send you, once I okay it with Stacy, send you the Madison statement, talk to Mike about what we can and cannot do about editing documents and what the work, if there's any workarounds for that. And then um, I can just send out a ton of, I can just, um, Try to, if that, I can convene a small group of you to work on parts of it, maybe. It might become more clear once you read their statement. Um, you might ha get some ideas from it, perhaps. I don't know. Daphne, yeah. Daphne did the student group come up with a, a draft statement or a, a statement that, that they put out about this whole racial justice thing? Um, for the Dane County Committee, are you saying? Yeah, you had talked earlier about the Youth Council, mm -hmm. um, and you had talked about this very topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I did take a lot of notes on like what we talked about. I don't know if um, I could compile that into like a statement representing everything that we talked about and our points on it, or I could try and convene another meeting and try and come up with a statement. Okay, I just thought if you had a statement, that would be very good mm -hmm. yeah. for us too. What, what do the youth of Dane County think? Mm -hmm. That's a good point, yeah. What you so, said, Kelly, makes sense is 
to me, as far as steps to keep this process moving and what you find out, I guess, about what constraints or flexibility we have will help us decide more as we go along. So what have we decided then? <laughs> well, I could send out the, the Madison statement to you all and I could offer some options of um, a way to proceed. And then you could reply to me individually saying, I think A, we should convene a small group to work on you know, this topic, or we should divide into two, maybe I'll have one or two or three options. And then uh, based on your, um, the results from that, I could um, start organizing a subcommittee to work on editing or drafting a statement, which then would come back to the committee on next month. And then we could have, um, a discussion about it and you would get the the draft statement ahead of time so that during the meeting you would have already read the the draft statement and be ready to talk i think that like no one should maybe feel left out because whoever um can do some edits on some of these statements um you'll all have space to bring those um that language to light in the next meeting that sounds like a good idea. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Do All we right. have a sense of scope for the assignment that we're looking at? Like, is this a two page statement with more vision and principles and acknowledgement of past failings? Or are we wanting something? more comprehensive well i wouldn't want to get something too large like you know like right. let's talk about racism over the last 400 years um right. you know because i feel like this is a moment that demands like some some kind of action or forward movement or mm -hmm. you know statement of where we're at um so but that's my own opinion. It doesn't mean that that can't happen maybe in the plan or we can, we could, yeah. we might even end up making a subcommittee that will always meet on this and it becomes an integral part of how we function as a committee. Like who knows, you know, it could become something much bigger. Um, and I don't want to, I'm not leading that. Like that's up to you guys, to all of you. I think, I think it would be good to have it be, be meaningful substantive but succinct we want people to read it um, and we want to be able to go back to it ourselves and remind ourselves of what we've committed to doing so exactly yeah i mean i'm, I'm leaning towards the two-page end of the continuum than the magnum opus end of the continuum and as long as we agree that's the scope then i think that'll help us focus our thinking and our conversation. Okay. Kelly, Anyone can I ask, are any other um, statements coming out of the, you know, the city of Middleton, any of the committees or the, the council? I just want to make sure that whatever, whatever this committee puts together is um, you know, reinforcing some of those concepts where where that's appropriate and certainly not contradicting anything that um, is being said elsewhere. Um, where the the city council is reading a resolution um, addressing George Floyd's murder on tomorrow night. It was written by Luke Fussard, right, Katie? And um, you can read that on the city's um, agendas website um, if you look up common council the agenda packet it will be enclosed in that agenda packet so you can read the resolution right away and respond to it i definitely don't feel like our committee is um we're not we are not held to 
contradicting or not contradicting council. Like we could come and say, we think this resolution isn't strong enough and this is what we would posit. So um, it, we don't necessarily have to agree with anything the city's doing, I guess, <laughs> to give that mm -hmm. freedom, put that freedom out there. <laughs> I oh, always no, that's, like think that's good. Yep, that's good clarification. I just wanted to make sure that one hand knew what the other was doing before right. you know we weighed in. It would be good to know what others are saying, right. um, so yeah. that if we do if we do take issue with anything, we're doing so, you know, with our eyes wide open, <laughs> right. and, and can call it out. I think it was, and you mentioned the accountability. You know, um, I, I just want to make sure that everything we write is intentional. Right. Yeah, that's, I think that's the only thing that I've heard coming out of the city. I mean, that the city has discussed other, like, I know that Chief Helen Brand will also speak at tomorrow's council meeting. So that will be instructive to hear what his response is. He's already, you know, released responses um, via social media and through the Middleton Police Department. Um, he's also going to talk about how the department um, has already adopted the eight can't wait um, policy suggestions that have been drifting around um you know different groups and there's also some you know controversy over that if you you know wade into it even deeper so um so it you know tomorrow night sitting in on the council meeting might be very instructive is what i guess i should just say hmm. I, I do like what lisa was saying though if we if we're going to offend people we want to do it intentionally <laughs> Not on <laughs> Okay, so do we have our next steps lined out then? We do. Okay, so we'll be looking for an email from you. Is that correct? Yep. Um, a small group will be convening. Is that correct as well? Yep. Okay, and um, drafting a version that will be sent out to everyone before the next meeting so that we can read it in advance and all come with our comments and ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anyone want to add anything else before we move on? Okay, so the next item on our agenda is um, the solid waste and transportation sections of the sustainable city plan. And I'm just wondering because it's eight o'clock if, um, I'm not sure I'm allowed to do this, but if people would be interested in deferring this to the next meeting. How does everyone feel about that? Well, don't we have water? We have two more chapters to go through on the next meeting as well. And then also this uh, racial plan. We do. It would, it would, I think we had forecasted five to seven months to get through the chapters and this would definitely start us out um, behind one month behind. But to be honest with you, Spencer, my partner here on these two topics isn't here and we could really put together something very succinct for the next meeting. Okay. Um, I don't know how people feel about that. Angie, this is Katie. Um, given that we want to try to bring a new lens to these chapters, I feel like it's a good decision to defer. Okay, that's a good thought. I agree. Yeah. But can yeah. We, uh, Daphne's update, being that we didn't get her update last month. Right, and, and we can get to that as long as everyone agrees that it's okay if we defer solid waste and transportation to the July meeting. I agree. That's I, I agree. I, I'm, I agree. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm fine. A plan is so you know what you're deviating from. We're doing it for a good reason. We're going to look at it with a new lens. And we've run out of time and we want to hear from Daphne. So that's right. We'll try to make it up down the line. But okay. I, I have you. a process question about um, considering comments on the draft. I mean, is it allowed? Would it be helpful? Um, to circulate comments that we might have on the chapters, both, you know, because I, I wrote a bunch of notes, I have a lot of questions, and it's probably background information that Kelly will be able to <laughs> fill me in on this week and uh, Spencer next week. Uh, but I'm just wondering, could would it be helpful to, um, the for the purpose of reducing the amount of time we have to spend discussing a month from now, 
uh, to circulate any feedback that we have now so that we can address all of our comments a little more rapidly next next time. Hi. So I wonder I if, if um, maybe we could try it out this next month if Spencer and I put our comments and um, a summary of our suggestions together and got it out to the group in advance as well, then everyone could come to the meeting already seeing what we were proposing or, or um, you know, what research we had done that, that might be included in the new chapters. Would that serve that purpose? Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I, I, the, the genius of the plan would come up with was that we're trying to keep all of us from having to do all the chapters. So we were delegating. So a couple of us would focus in on each one and then we would comment on, the whole community would comment on that subgroup's comments yep. rather than making up our own comments. So if, uh, I like what you're suggesting, Angie, that getting it, getting it to us in advance of the meeting, at least in theory, we have the chance to read right. in advance and get some. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can do that. And I, I think it might be of value to, um, I know the vision statements in the plan and everything, but I think even like one or two paragraphs, if the people um, doing the reviews just provide sort of a, a summary, you know, it might include assumptions like an example uh, would be for solid waste. We're talking about recycling metrics. But one of the, the things that might not be as clear to people is that the only thing we're really tracking is residential recycling, not commercial or industrial. So I think it might be a value if Spencer and I put together um, something very concise that sort of gives you a summary of the chapter and then we go into the revisions that we're proposing. That might get us off faster than um, trying to explain everything at the moment. Now, as far as the domino effect, uh, we had two sub other subgroups scheduled for July. I think it seems like two subgroups per meeting is maybe about as optimistic as we want to get. So I, how do we want to balance the, or make those dominoes fall? Well, we might have to push it back, each one back a month, if, unless that doesn't work for someone. Well, I think, the, well, the key question is that there are two July presentations already scheduled, so one of them would be bumped. So yes. which one gets bumped? So, that, so I was thinking more like a domino effect, but I mean. Or do you think, them all or, um, or are you suggesting that we just have the June presentation in July and then slide everything one month? That's what because I'm suggesting. Actually, okay, good. Actually, I'd appreciate that because I was looking forward to <laughs> seeing the vice chair and the chair role modeling how to do this so <laughs> and that was I, our I, thought too i have to say that this was entirely my fault that i didn't get the summary sheet because we had meetings um, on transportation and solid waste with um, spencer and angie and i took notes and then my task was to make it succinct and and always to get things out sooner than i ever get them out and I just got swamped this month and I did not follow through. So it's comp entirely my fault. Angie and Spencer did their part and had all the brilliant ideas and they are written down and they're even in the plan, you know, like, but um, not in a format that's as easy as what Angie's talking about. So um, I take all the blame for this month. But there's no blame. I mean, yeah. I think we would really like to reconsider everything, um, especially giving given what we talked about tonight and the concept of respect and then actually, you know, making changes that make changes. That's, that's one of the things that um, I'm really interested in taking a look at again is because we talked about things, but I'm thinking about them with a different lens now and maybe we can make some other changes that make them more meaningful. Yep. So I guess in summary, then we'll be moving solid waste and transportation to the July meeting and then July to August and so on. And we'll have a section in the July meeting for our review of um, um, the equity 
statement and, and actions. And I think with that, we're ready to move on to the last agenda item, which is um, Daphne and any updates on the resolution. Hi. Okay, so um, I kind of created a short list of that would summarize everything we're doing. So basically, uh, where we left off, like uh, before the COVID uh, virus hit, was that we were trying to find the baselines for each of our goals, such as like waste and renewable energy and stuff. Um, it's been kind of difficult to do that, to find the baselines, especially like waste, because we aren't generating any waste in the schools right now. Um, but um, we're, we're still figuring out how to do that and we're trying to figure out how to adapt to the coronavirus as we try to move the resolution forward. But what I can do right now is that I am making more connections with board members and trying to see like what their point of view is um, and how they could weigh into me, like they could give their opinion to me and I could give, yeah, um, and put that into the resolution. Um, I am also trying to find more student members and get more students involved throughout the resolution process right now, um, obviously virtually. And in general, I think I'm just making more connections and trying to figure out everything I can do for the resolution, given that we, I have to stay home and I can't, I can't do anything in school. Yeah. So that's kind of my short update. <laughs> what about the petition signing? If that was online, that could be on. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk with my um, student, a student group about that. That was what we were working on right before the coronavirus hit was how we were going to reach out to classrooms and um, try to start the pledge and, and sign in and stuff. Great summary, definitely. I, I have a quick uh, uh, thought about uh, because of your talk. So let me think about uh, that Angie, if you, uh, if you are thinking about like uh, the uh, solid the waste, uh, recycling those kind of uh, issues i think uh, probably uh, we need to uh, think more about um, the waste of ppe mm, yes. in the following like months or maybe a few years ppe pollution will be a huge huge uh, environmental challenges to our community so if we could uh, uh, put that into our plan i think that would be another uh, good uh, good uh, uh, idea did you? That's a great did, idea. Did you say PPE? Yes. Yeah, sure. So personal protective equipment. Yeah. So you know, if people have latex gloves or masks or any other type oh, of got it. Um, okay. materials I that did. come out of the medical oh. industry. Yeah. So that's how we hey, can I call you in about five minutes? No problem. I just want to check with Jerry here. Okay. So is that more of a suggestion Sorry about that. for the sustainability plan than for Daphne's resolution project? Yeah, I, I, because uh, Angie talked about like uh, the solid the waste and uh, yeah. uh, definitely just uh, talk about, you know, the uh, sustainability uh, in school and uh, we have nothing to uh, waste right now, <laughs> nobody uh, on campus. So that made me uh, think about like uh, the PPE issue. Now mm -hmm. it's a big challenge to our environment. Well, I was taking a walk one day and there was a mask in the ditch. <laughs> Somebody just <laughs> threw it. Oh, no. Well, and I know the EPA has come out with some guidelines recently on managing um, waste associated with COVID. So um, there's some sources of information out there and I'll definitely look into that. Thank you, Andy. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. I, I also have a quick question about um, maybe uh, for our um, household. How do we recycle those uh, detergent like uh, bottles? Because uh, now we are using a lot of disinfectant. And I'm wondering how do we uh, safely recycle those uh, bottles or just, uh, I think we, we probably need to uh, um, give uh, people a kind of like education about about that too okay and we can do that i i can pull together some information on that as well thank you yep my pleasure does anyone have any other questions for daphne i 
had me one. Did, Daphne, did you ever uh, find out a baseline for energy, energy use? I think um, Mr. Rhodes has that, Dale Rhodes. Um, I don't think he communicated that with me yet. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll email him and ask him. Okay. Okay. I had a question, and that's just where can I find a copy of the resolution? Is there a, a sustainability page, or mm -hmm. is this on? I didn't have a chance to look on the sustainability committee's website. Yeah. So right now, uh, at it's one hundred. I don't know if you have this. Uh, you can write this down, but it's one zero zero, and then just renew. Okay. And then MCPASD, and then I think it's dot org. Could you just cut and paste into the chat? Mm -hmm. um, you'll find the resolution there. That was initially the first draft, and we're probably we're going to make changes. We are making changes, especially with like the baseline and everything. Um, but that's kind of what generally what we're going for. Great, thank you. Okay. So any other comments or questions? I have a question, not for Daphne, but it's about um, the chapters of the plan. And that is, I'm not signed up yet to do any of the reviews and I'd be happy to help out with the two scheduled for, well, it's more than two, I guess, but the presentation scheduled for August, if there's um, room for me on those, I'm happy to work on those. I think Dick had room on the water one, didn't he? I think it was just Dick and somebody else. Was it Chris? Um, I was going to be on that one too, but as staff. Um, okay. But yeah, water. If you see, you have a background in that too. If you'd be interested in joining that subgroup, that'd okay. be helpful. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so unless there's. Quick, I, else? I was just going to throw a quick question back to Daphne as far as the process. How how are you feeling about the progress, the, the rate of progress? Uh, is the it seems like you're talking a lot about the kind of deep in the weeds implementation kind of issues. Mm -hmm. When you started out trying to just we want a resolution to have the school board declare an intention and a direction, mm -hmm. and and you're getting bogged down. It seems it sounds like with you know, yeah, we have to figure out what the baseline is, and that seems like that's staff, and that's implementation, that's not executive direction. And I'm just, just wondering, is that feeling like like that progress or that process is what you're wanting to see, or thoughts, please? <laughs> oh, I'm okay. Um, yeah, I think I've 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 learned to compromise a tiny bit. Um, I think that initially my goals for speed were a lot more dramatic. Like I wanted the resolution passed by December. And I think just the general attitude was like um, with the students and we kind of just collectively decided like, we don't want like the people we're working with, like um, the assistant superintendent, you know, like all the other staff we're working with to get annoyed or like, annoyed with us and we just want to keep like good relations I guess but at the same time push as hard as we can um the thing with the baselines is that um it, yeah I think for the I think that the assistant superintendent she said that she uh the resolution did need baselines and like um the format of the resolution if you're going to say like 40 percent by this date um uh, in relation to this date, you have to have the baseline in order to measure the progress and really like understand what 40% more or less is. So I think the baselines are important. Um, but I hope that as, as I make more connections with board members and other students, uh, there's just more pressure and I get more people on board. I mean, that's kind of all I can do right now, really. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I'm, gl I'm glad somebody's taking point and pushing this agenda forward and <laughs> thank you for making that happen. Thank you. And but I think Kermit, what, what you're saying too, um, 
Implementation and getting the resolution agreed to are kind of two different things because Madison, as you know, because you, you've talked with, um, what was his name? Charles. 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 Yeah. Was it Charles? Yeah. Talked to Charles and they didn't say, here's how we're going to do it. They said, should we do this? And the school board said, yes, we should do this. And then they came up with a plan to implement. Right. And I think you're, you're, the big thing we have to do here is to get the school board to say, yes, we want to do this. And then you come up with an impl implementation plan. Right. If you're, you're, you're getting bogged down in uh, implementation now before they even say, yes, we want to we agree to it. It's just time's going, time's ticking. And as you know, what do we have? 10 years to, to cut it in half, something like that. So um, I think whatever you can do Even to more. move it along and, and get it to the school board um, would, be, would be a good path to take. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. And those I agree. people signing petition, you got, you know, got people behind you saying, yeah, we, we need to do this. That, that's, that's huge, I think. And, and at the same always, time, I, I, I want to be humble and defer to Daphne, who's in the trenches yeah. trying to make this happen. And so I, I want to cheerlead you <laughs> onward. And of course, <laughs> I, I agree yeah. with Deb's concern. That's essentially the thrust of my, my concern that it's getting bogged down. But if that's the way it has to be for this situation, because you're right there working with it, then yeah. that's the way it is. Well, if there's I, any way we can speed it up, sorry. Well, Eau Claire School District, uh, the school, the Eau Claire School Board um, has agreed to um, a resolution. And did you get a hold of their resolution by any chance, just to see what what they came up with and what the school board agreed to? Um, that might be something you you might want to do, because there are other school districts. I don't know about where Monona is, but member Monona was um, in this process as well. So it might be helpful just to see how detailed these other resolutions are that school mm -hmm. boards have um, agreed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I will do that. <laughs> and Daphne, I think at one of the last meetings, maybe it was two meetings ago, um, I said that I would get some contact information for you for a couple of people on the board and talk to them about this in advance. So I will get that done. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> sure. And if there's anything else that we can do to support you, please don't hesitate. Let us know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I think with that, um, we're at the end of the meeting and ready to call it to a close unless someone has something else. So I would just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Well, thanks everybody. We need a vote. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? <laughs> <laughs> and so it passes. Oh, anyone <laughs> refraining from voting? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you.